Hey guys, and welcome back to another free plugin Friday where we look at free plugins that can help you out in your productions. Now, today we are looking at Ven Audio's Free Clip, which is a clipping plugin. I was never a huge fan of clipping when I was mixing rock music, but in dance music, it is very often used to get a nice, loud, consistent master. Now that the loudness wars are kind of over, you don't really need to get that loud, but it's kind of part of the sound. So I think clipping plugins are still important. And of course, you can use them to get intentional distortion in other ways. Now, the way we're going to be looking at this plugin is in that more mastering context and the way I kind of like to use clipping with limited to kind of share the load to get it loud. So we're going to look at how loud we can get it with this. Um, and we may look at it in a few other kind of things like just on a kick on some leads as more of a distortion device. Um, but let's just quickly go into the features of Ven Audio Free Clip and all the little things that make it actually really, really cool for a Clipper plugin and kind of things that some other plugins don't include. So the main kind of controls, obviously a gain, output and clip ceiling. So the clip ceiling allows you to actually decide what DBFS you wanted to click at. Now, with a lot of kind of streaming and such, when you've got it at the end, um, you know, it's the last thing in your chain and you want to output it Minus one is usually the safe bet um, with overs and such. So if this is going to be the last in your chain, obviously you can go down to minus one or you can give yourself even more headroom. Otherwise, you can get it to clip early and then let a maximizer or limiter, basically the same thing, um, Brick wall limiter do that for you. Uh, you know, you can set up however, and of course, if you want intentional distortion, you can bring it down. You can also use the gain and output controls to increase the volume if you're using it as a maximizer itself. Um, so, you know, keep the ceiling where you want it and then boost up the gain and keep the output at zero. Or if you're feeding it into a limiter, you can drive the output and input. There's a lot of different ways of using it. It's just going to be a balance of where you're going to use it in the chain and how you want to use it. Uh, so that's kind of the three controls you need for actually getting the clipping. Now, the fourth control here is this soft clip type. So hard clipping is generally when you want that ceiling. Uh, it's going to basically get to a point and cut everything beyond that and clip off all those peaks. But you've got other kinds of waves of soft clipping that can be useful too, especially if you're using the context I am before a limiter. Uh, and so we've got different modes. We've got quintic, cubic, hyperbolic tan, algebraic, and arc tangent. Now, as you can notice, you can see here, the curve becomes softer and flatter and flatter until here it's like very smooth, very flat, where here it's linear and then bang, clips. So it's really, we're going to go through them. What you're going to hear a big difference is hard clipping allows transients to really punch, but you get this kind of high end. And you might have heard it in some really, really kind of limited, especially dance tracks. Some of the amateur dance tracks you hear this, they've gone trying to get really loud and just clipped it and you've got this harshness. Whereas as you go to these kind of softer curves, you're getting more and more distortion, but there's kind of more of a warmth around the distortion. It's it's interesting to explain. Uh, so there, we're going to have a listen to them. Most of the time we're going to be using on hard clipping because for this kind of context, I like hard clipping. But yes, we'll go through all the others. But the main bit that makes this plugin stand out for me, especially for a free plugin, is the oversampling. Now... I want to do a whole thing on oversampling. I've been putting it off. But oversampling is quite important for two reasons when you're using it in the master, right? The first reason is where oversampling is always important. It's getting aliasing distortion. And the thing with aliasing distortion is when you've got higher frequencies, which you're going to have in your master, especially dance master, you're going to have the whole frequency spectrum there. And you're distorting them. They're going to create harmonics outside the Nyquist point. And that's going to call foldback distortion and you're going to get this alien distortion. It sounds quite terrible. So having oversampling is great. And does it have oversampling? It's got one times, which is no oversampling, two times, three times, eight times, up to 32 times. Now, obviously, this uses CPU, but it's not actually that bad for me. You know, we're going to keep about four. I think we'll keep it eight times because you don't really need 32 times unless you're doing really insane stuff. I might 
bring this plugin into a video about oversampling just to show like how far you can push it. And it's got this really cool thing here, which is post oversampling clip. So the second thing with oversampling when you're coming to a mastering is it can help with getting like weird into sample peaks. So within sample peaks, the higher the sampling rate, uh, you've got more information, you've got less into sample peaks because there's less kind of distance between each sample. Um, that's kind of a crude way of explaining it, but like, yeah, oversampling can help eliminate that ability. Um, but what will need to happen then is you clip again when you downsample. So you've got this here, so you can do no post oversampling. You can do it at zero dBFS so that basically it will clip again once it's oversampled, but only at the ceiling of zero to make sure that zero, but like your ceiling set differently, or you could have it at your ceiling. Uh, most of the time I'm going to keep it at my ceiling. Um, it is then going to clip a little bit more, but as we're really trying to show what the clipping is, this just prevents any of that going on. And then obviously you have limiters that have true peak detection and other things, which is a slightly different thing, but I'm just going to try and get that back to zero. And you can double click controls, I believe, to get them back to zero. Uh, I'm not sure, oversampling, geez, geez, which one? So let's have a look at it. I've got this song here. Now the way we're going to use it, like I said, is running into um, the Ultra Maximizer, the L2 here, because it's a fairly normal limiter plugin that everyone uses. We are going to turn it off for a lot just so you can hear it without affecting this. But the way I like to run it in this kind of mastering setting or like at the end of your chain when you're pushing off a master, maybe just to listen to or just loud master for clients or whatever. The idea is the clipper takes down the transients enough that you kind of let the limiter breathe a bit more so you can get louder. You the limiter's not really just pumping down on three or four dB on say a hi-hat transient or something like that. It's actually working on the whole mix without getting super obvious distortion. That's kind of what we're going to do here. So we're going to start off doing that and then I'm going to turn off the ultra maximizer so you can really listen and we'll really start driving it so you can hear the different clips and you're not actually going to get the effects. But um, for starters, what we'll do is have a look at how it attenuates and then we'll double back around. So it's going to be a bit of an interesting in a review where we're going to go back and forth a little bit, but uh, let's just start off with having a listen to it and kind of showing you what I'm doing. So as you can see here, what we're gonna actually do with the song is play it all, but it's gonna loop the same section at the end. And when we get to that loop, we're actually gonna just drive through all the different settings and stuff. But So you're doing about 3 dB of attenuation here. Turn this on. And if I bring this down, you'll notice I'm doing less attenuation. And we haven't increased the volume at all. But what we've done is clipped those transients slightly. Now you can barely hear it. But listen to it on that snare. It just stops the pumping from the L2. Now of course we could drive this up even more and that's what we're going to do now. To get even more volume. Now you can hear it crunch a little bit. So we raise our ceiling back up. And still get that 3 dB of limiting. And we're significantly louder. Now as we go through this, I'm gonna actually pull out loudness um, controls and stuff and really dive right into the loudness. Uh, like I said, we're going to swap around in this review because I think that's going to be a very interesting thing to see. But yeah, I'm just kind of showing how it works. So let's now um, bring that game back down. I'm going to give myself some headroom here by turning down this output. And then we're going to turn off the limiter. It's obviously going to go quieter. I might just turn the feed up there. We just don't want to um, actually clip the um, recording software because that's not designed for clipping this is actually designed for clipping but let's drag this ceiling down and start listening to what it's really doing and 
And once it gets to kind of drums, you're going to hear it more. But while we're on this soft bit, let's have a listen to the different ones. So hard, more transients. Obviously, we're overkill right now with the amount we're doing. So that's the softest with the most distortion. So let's get out of the distortion zone. To about here and then compare and then compare them again. So we're coming up to this section here. Um, once the loops around there, let's compare them again so you're hearing the same thing, right? Might just bring up the input gain a bit and bring that ceiling here, I reckon. Now what's really cool is you get this little readout of how much distortion's going on. can really hear there's a difference in volume there. It's really compressing it down by clipping a lot more on the softer curves. So if I'd stick around hard or quintic probably. Quintic's gonna be a more soft one, as you can see by this part. But it's not gonna completely obliterate those transients. Now if you weren't going for loudness but just the tone, obviously then you could just bring that up. Still getting distortion here though, so we'd have to bring back the gain. We're actually now losing, well we're losing that 1dB, so let's turn that up. We aren't clipping the um, output, so we should be fine. Gonna go back through them again. Listen to the pads as well, the kind of more ambient stuff, and see what gets brought up. Okay, so that's kind of the different modes. They are really subtle. Um, we're going to go back to this loop and I'm actually gonna have a look at the loudness and again, do what we did before. And like I showed you, it kind of reduced the attenuation, but we're actually gonna compare how loud we can get it. And obviously you're gonna get more clipping, but you're also gonna get more delimiting. It's, it's kind of using these together um, to get that loud but thick kind of very like lower dynamic range kind of sound. So we've got this Luffs meter here and you can actually see the dynamic range. Now, personally, I prefer about 10 dB of dynamic range. Um, um, so I do this very, very lightly with very light amount of limiting. I'm often using Ozone, which has got much more um, complex, but I'm using L2 here because it's an older plugin. A lot of people might have it from Waves, and also it does a very kind of simple but clean style of limiting. Where well, Ozone does like a lot of multiband limiting and stuff, so it colors a little bit more, but can give it a bit more of a juicy sound and get a bit more loudness out of it. And without affecting transients, it's it has its own sound. I like some of the Ozone. But anyway, so we're using L2. We've got our luffs here. So what I first want to do is probably just turn everything off to give you a baseline of what it's like. <laughs> So you can see here where it's going. If we click back on master, we've got on K12. So you can kind of see that's the RMS, that's the peak level. So we've got about 12 laughs. Now if we put the L2 on, it's actually gonna really increase the volume. So L2 is doing a bit of work here. You can hear it. See, it's kind of going like this, right? And we're at 7.9. So we put on free clip. What you'll be able to do is actually bring the clip ceiling down and it's going to get louder, which seems like a bit of an oxymoron because 
ceiling should bring the volume down, right? Because it's clipping it. But it's going to bring the peak down, but let the limiter breathe more. Now we're doing no attenuations, all clipping. We are doing a bit of 1 dB, so I might turn that off and just still compare. It's still louder. Because that clipping is just opening up that dynamics, right? And it's not as kind of pumpy and kind of... Yeah, it's, it's a lot more punchy. So we bypassed again. The way I like to do it is use both. So let's uh, bring that ceiling up to about minus three. So we're getting a little bit of action from this. And then bring the gain up. So let's uh, reset this and see what we're getting. Now it's minus 6.8. Which I wouldn't want any less dynamic range than this, but if you're going for loud, if that's what you want, and you want that very thick sausage tone, this is how you're going to get it. And you can really push. So let's really push and have a look. That's pretty distorted now. So let's raise that ceiling. Let's just see how loud we've actually got it. Let's uh, bypass these both. kind of ruin the delays there so let's just start that again and it's really brought up that delay feedback let's uh, do this because I turned that off instead of bypassing it so this is way too crushed for me personally but you can see what you can do with it and again we can go through how these affect it but it's going to get way more distorted right you can hear the lows actually coming through interestingly because the transients are getting crushed. Let's uh, pull this up all the way and bring that gain down a bit. So in this context you're really using it for more soft clipping, right? giving it a bit of juice and volume, and you're still helping this attenuation. So let's compare it to another plugin. So I'm gonna pull up Little Clipper. Now this is what I often use for clipping. Uh, it's a much more simple clipping program that is Big Clipper as well. Now I'm not sure what the over, I believe this does use oversampling, but there's no controls for it, but it does have this wet dry mix. So let's just compare them. I'm gonna try and set them up exactly the same. So they have this input gain, which is the same as obviously this input gain, and then ceiling here, which is the same. So we're gonna set the ceiling to minus, let's go minus three again. We're gonna hit it with on hard. Um, and input gain, let's put it up to four. You know, we're just getting enough with four, right? We're getting plenty of um, crunch. Uh, so, and we'll keep the ultra maximizer the same. So let's compare the two. Um, let's go back to this section, compare the two. Let's start with them both off. Let's do the, this, have a look at the loves. Let's do the Ben Audio. Okay, let's do little 
Clipper. Back to Van Audio. Back to Little Clipper. Little Clipper seems to distort the low end a little bit more, but also allow more low ends to what I can hear, but it's very, very close. This is a pay plugin, by the way. This seems a little bit more natural, a little bit less fat going on. It's really up to your taste. Again, this does have the wet dry controls, so I can always bring it back. Now let's try it at the softest settings. So I'm gonna bring that to the softest, this to the softest. Um, and let's reset the gains to zero. Now we're using the soft type and let's compare again. So this is nothing. I'm going to keep resetting this just so you can see. It's Like I said, it's not something I care about as much. And what I might do is bring this threshold up a little bit so it's got less of an effect maybe. Okay, let's do a free clip. Actually, let's do one dB so we're not getting quieter. Now you can see that, that crumbles a lot. Let's have a listen to Little Clipper. A little bit more solidarity in the low end. But again, it's a tasting, right? Back to Free Clip. Maybe this is too soft, maybe we try it. This. Hmm, that seems more on par to me. Okay, let's really drive it. Uh, we're gonna go halfway on the hardness. And maybe cubic. So I'm gonna add an extra, let's just really distort it and see what we can hear. Stupidly extreme, right? I'm just gonna turn down your volume down so it's, you know, this is so, so extreme. too extreme obviously let's uh, back these right down again um, but the idea is to hear those differences like I said I use little clip all the time it's a paid plugin it's not that expensive though but comparing the free to the paid they do sound different and they both have their kind of purposes not all clippers are gonna sound the same they're all gonna sound slightly different um, let me just move off that bit because it's gonna be annoying um, so yeah definitely for a free plugin it sounds great. It, uh, in some ways, I like it better than the Little Clipper. Um, I don't have many other clipping plugins. I do have like clipping algorithms in Ozone and stuff that's a little bit different. I've got distortion plugins. Um, but yeah, both of them, they hold up just for doing that thing. You've got to be very, very careful and you've got to double check because it's very easy. And I've heard this on so many SoundCloud mixes to just make it sound terrible especially the ones that don't look after true peak and stuff. And then when they're converted to MP3, that's the other thing when you're converting down to AAC and MP3 and all these lossy formats, the more distorted and the less dynamic range you have, the more distortion that is actually getting caused in those algorithms. Um, and you can get a lot of peaking going on there. I've, I've read up to like four plus four dB above zero peaks, but 
like stupidly distorted dubstep and stuff, which is insane. Um, so you do have to be very careful when you master like that. But let's have a look at it. We're going to turn off a little clipper, get rid of you. I'm just going to solo some things so you can really hear, you know, as more of a creative effect. So the first one I always think of is kick drums. So let's just solo the kick drum and mess around with this. Let's get it nice and distorted. In your hard, hardcore kind of way. Obviously with hard style, you probably want to EQ it a bit more. So now you can really hear how the soft type's very different. You've got that high end kind of harsh distortion there. Where here it's a lot more rounded and warm. Let's take it to the extreme. So you'd want to probably filter that off. Let's put it back a bit. What about a little just warmth there? Does lose a little bit of low end. Well, Cubic's a bit better. You can really see how the RMS is really going up with this. Look at that loudness shift. Let's go to master, you can see here. Maybe let's bring the gain down a little bit. We're actually lowering the peaks, but the RMS is going up heat, so that's what distortion does. It's even more effective than compressors sometimes. So if you want to add a little bit more kind of oomph to your kick, it's very peaky and you need to shave those transients off. Now you can use a limiter, but that's going to kind of squash it a bit. Something like a clipper could work really well. But let's grab some really distorted stuff and get this uh, 303 style synth. <laughs> and drive it even more. It does have reverb on it, so we're driving that reverb up. What I might do is just quickly um, turn off the reverb delay and distortion and this is what it sounds like by itself. So now we're looking at using it as a distortion device. Obviously, it's way quieter, right? Let's see um, if you can hear the problems with not using oversampling. You might not be able to because this is kind of filtered, but anyway. Let's take off the filter and see. Not really. So you can really use it as a device like that, as an actual intentional distortion device to get some cool distortion on the right things. Okay, let's uh, let's switch all these back on. And let's have a look at um, the bass. Oh, let me just turn that off first. 
sometimes I like using clippers on these kind of bases to get a little bit more harmonics, a little bit more something going on. This is where the soft comes in really well. Like I said, that is that sound that might make you want to avoid hard. Now, it's something that's harder to hear in the whole mix because you've got all these other transients kind of triggering it, but any sustained sound is going to have that effect. So for less transient mixes, you do probably want to use a softer clipping type. But anyway, I think we'll leave it there. That should be enough information. You've heard it against Little Clipper. You've heard it on single sources and you've heard all the different modes. Go grab it, Ven Audio Free Clip. It's free, it has oversampling and if you don't have a clipper, it can bring you into the world of clipping. Like I said, I'm not a huge fan of just going for loud for the sake of it, but dance music has become sort of known, especially heavier EDM, for having a slightly compressed kind of full distorted sound. So use it reasonably. Again, like I said, I've heard the SoundCloud and some of the more amateur, I guess, masters. Not that they're amateur producers. The, the songs are good, but just more sometimes you hear it and you get these clipping artifacts. Um, so don't overdo it. But give this a go and just slightly take that edge off. Let your limiter breathe a little bit and you can get a real kind of fat sound. Um, so, and of course you can try it on rock music and stuff too. I just prefer a lot more kind of headroom on rock music. It's It's got a different vibe. It's not about the pumping. It's much more about the kind of sounds and tones to me. Um, kind of different from this heavier dance music. Thanks for watching. Please like this video and subscribe. If you're not subscribed, I have Free Plugin Friday coming out nearly every Friday. We did miss a few and I did talk about making up for it. Um, I think I said this in maybe last week's video. Uh, we want to do kind of some other cool things where I look at other small plugins and stuff. Um, you know, it's been a bit weird here going to lockdown in Melbourne. So hopefully we can start getting that done. So thanks again, and I'll see you next time.